Today we have a counter guide for the new deck that is the Voiceless Voice deck for the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG. I'm very excited to cover it because I had a lot of great time playing against the deck and learning its choke points and the direct counters that are available to defeat and counter the Voiceless Voice deck. But before we get started, let's go ahead and jump into a quick synopsis of what the deck is all about. The Voiceless Voice revolves around the ritual summoning of Skull Guardian, Protector of the Voiceless Voice, a formidable monster with a fairly large attack that can reach up to 4100 attack if low the prayers of the Voiceless Voice is present on the field or in the graveyard. Additionally, when low and Skull Guardian are on the field together, the latter gains the ability to act as an omni negate providing significant defensive capabilities pretty solid board if you ask me low enables players to search and play archetype specific continuous spell or trap cards directly from the deck such as barrier of the voiceless voice for protection or radiance of the voiceless voice for offensive plays understanding how to counter the voiceless voice strategy involves recognizing its resilience on ritual summoning and graveyard interactions to effectively counter it we can play a plethora of strategies especially one that i'm sure you already know Droll and Lockbird or even Dimensional Shifter, neutralizing graveyard effects and searching effects. This these two cards literally will just shut the deck down. It's important that you understand the mechanics and strategies of the voiceless voice archetype so that you can adapt to the deck, the play styles, and effectively use the counters to stop key plays and gain the upper hand in duels against the voiceless voice. And in today's counter guide video, of course, we are going to cover when to ash, when to in perm, what direct counters exist, what board breakers exists and what floodgates can be used to effectively counter the voiceless voice deck and not be left with i don't know what this deck does i don't know what to hit because i know this deck has been topping fairly well recently and it's because people don't know how it plays and we're here to help you cover that so let's go ahead and jump into the nitty gritty the reason why you're here so let's go ahead and cover when to ash and when to infinite impermanence and when i say infinite impermanence i am also encompassing effect vagler and Ghost Mourner or any sort of hand trap that can activate and negate a monster on board so just keep that in mind the reason why i just say infinite impermanence is because we all know infinite impermanence is universally accepted on master duel and also the tcg meta so let's go ahead and cover this very briefly and quickly so that we can understand why it's important to know when to ash and infinite impermanence the number one card that you want to target is of course going to be low low is a pivotal card for initiating ritual plays and graveyard setup making it crucial to disrupt its effect early Early on activating infinite impermanence on low is just going to be so monumental for you to prevent their scalability and their ritual mechanics and negating the low extends beyond just halting initial plays it plays a significant role in preventing the activation of barrier directly from the deck to the spell and trap card zone because if you do not stop low they'll get the barrier the barrier will get Safira. Safira will activate its effect send itself to the graveyard by also pitching a spell card to the deck and searching a ritual monster to the hand and more than likely they're sending prayers to the graveyard and they're adding skull guardian to the hand which will then create a crazy board by ending it on dino mondo and dino mondo leverages its quick play effect because it tributes itself as cause thereby evading infinite permanence and cards like ghost mourner and effect veiler and facilitates the revival of skull guardian on your turn subsequently low gets reborn as well and reactivates its effect all during your turn that is why stopping the low is completely and importantly your number one target your second target is going to be herald herald acts as a secondary yet highly potent one card combo with its deck strategy the first and foremost target for herald's effect tends to be Trias Hierarchia with Herald of the Arc Light as a secondary choice. Negating Herald's effect is critical. Doing so prevents Treas Hierarchia from being sent to the graveyard, which is a pivotal step in the opponent's combo. Failure to negate Herald allows the opponent to proceed by sending Trias to the graveyard. This in turn enables Trias to tribute the Diviner and special summon itself from the graveyard, thereby activating Diviner's secondary effect. This effect special summons at level 2 or lower fairy from the deck and unsurprisingly that is going to be low which is the primary choice for this action of course by special summoning low the cycle of ritual bait strategies that we just covered previously is effectively rebooted emphasizing the importance of disrupting herald 
early in the sequence to thwart the opponent's plans and maintain control over the game's progression and at this point you can utilize ash or if it in permanence but be strategical on which you decide to use of course i would recommend that you use infinite impermanence on the herald of course similar to the low low herald infinite impermanence ash on anything else honestly the third option high priority ash is going to be preparation of rights preparation of rights emerges as another critical target for negation due to its role in facilitating the dex ritual summoning mechanics and capabilities by the way some players are opting to use nadir servant over pre-preparations but from a strategic standpoint based on my experience experience only pre-preparation of rights is seen as more of a synergistic component in the deck focus on ritual summoning particularly over nadir servant which might not align as well with, with the strategies of a vo of the voiceless voice deck but you let me know in the comments below how you feel about this would you play nadir over pre-preparation or would you play them both in conjunction let me know voiceless voice players out there let me know how you feel about this but of course pre-preparation of rights significantly boosts the deck's efficiency by searching for prayer ritual spell along with saravis which provides targeting protection this search capability is fundamental to the deck strategy allowing for a smooth transition into further summoning actions such as normal summoning the diviner or the low the ability of preparation of rights to streamline these processes and set of critical plays it makes it in my opinion a valuable component of the ritual summoning engine of the voiceless voice negating this card can substantially disrupt the opponent's setup and momentum highlighting the importance of carefully considering when and how to use Use your ash and imperm in response to the opponent's plays which is why i say imperm the low and the diviner save the ash for barrier save the ash for Safira, save the ash for pre-preparation of rights and speaking on Safira, this is going to be our next and final high priority target Safira acts as both a reinforcement of the army and a foolish burial it's exceptional utility within the deck this card stands out due to its dual functionality, efficiently loading up the graveyard by sending prayers of the voiceless and searching plus adding skull guardian to the player's hand and if the player has low in their hand in conjunction with Safira, it just elevates the potential for a ritual summon of skull guardian within the same combo line so those are our top options on when you should infinite impermanence and ash but we still have one more option that i want to throw out there for you and again this is all going to be based on preference your hand the game state how everything's turning out Yu-Gi-Oh is not black and white so we can't determine exactly how things are going Going to go down so i'm going to leave it up to you i just want to give you this last strategic option for you the barrier of the voiceless it serves as a crucial role in the deck strategy facilitating the search and addition of Safira to the hand this function is integral as we've covered up because it's a great way to set up the deck's core plays and choosing to use ash on barrier instead of directly in Safira can be a technically sound decision this approach aims to prevent the chain of events that barrier sets in motion so by stopping the barrier you essentially in theory halt the setup for summoning Safira, and by extension the potential combo it enables including those involving skull guardian the revival of low and dynamondo so when considering additional counters to the voiceless deck beyond ash and infinite permanence here are five effective counters based on gameplay experience against the deck in ranking order i will provide you the five direct counters that we have why it works and why it's ranked at its numbered order starting off at number five we have triple tactics thrust thrust offers strategic flexibility due to its potential to trigger under more diverse conditions than its counterpart triple tactics talents you do not have to rely solely on effects being activated during the main phase they can be activated at any point in time specifically in matchups against the voiceless voice deck dynamondo's activation creates an opportunity for thrust to lead into a crucial spell or trap this sequence can result in gaining significant advantage whether it's you running talents as well as the thrust and searching it because the dynamondo was activated during the main phase searching thrust can allow you to draw draw cards disrupt the opponent's hand or even steal an opponent's monster depending on the situation so thrust can be an effective choice to utilize against the voiceless voice deck at number four dd crow emerges as a valuable tool against the voiceless voice deck offering targeted graveyard disruption to impede their combo plays by strategically removing cards like low Safira, or prayers of the voiceless from their graveyard dd crow stifles their ability to execute their strategies effectively this disruption limits the opponent to 
suboptimal plays, potentially neutralizing their board presence and rendering Dino Mondo ineffective on your turn. At number three, we've got Anti Spell Fragrance. This card proves devastating against the Voiceless deck, effectively shutting down their entire strategy by hampering their ability to activate spells. Given the deck's heavy reliance on spells for ritual summoning and other crucial plays, Anti Spell Fragrance severely limits their options and disrupts their game plan. With minimal trap presence in the voiceless deck and spot removal, this floodgate proves exceptionally potent, leaving the opponent with few outs to counter its effects. At number two, we've got Dimensional Shifter. We already know this card emerges as a potent counter, not only to the Voiceless deck, but numerous other meta strategies. By banishing all cards in both players' graveyard for the turn, Dimensional Shifter effectively neutralizes the Voiceless deck's ability to utilize the graveyard resources. Say goodbye to the low, say goodbye to the Skull Guardian, say goodbye to the Saphira, man. They will not come back from a Dimensional Shifter. This thing will literally just GG, man, GG, no lot even harder than anti-spell fragrance. I am more than sure you already know what card it is, and of course, it's Droll and Lockbird. This card takes the top spot as the most devastating counter against the Voiceless deck and other numerous decks like Dabble Star, Variants, Fire King, anything really. This thing is just crazy cracked right now. These five direct counters against the Voiceless Voice Strategy offer a comprehensive toolkit for disrupting its key plays and gaining the upper hand in duels. While we've outlined these options based on their effectiveness and impact, remember it's important that the choice of counters ultimately depends on individual preference, playstyle, and deck synergy. Now moving on to the available board breakers in no specific order and completely up to you and your preference, we have Nibiru which is best used right after the Link Summon of Dino Mondo. Lava Golem and Kaiju, this is just amazing. On your turn, the opponent will most likely bring back the Skull Guardian and the Low with a Voiceless Trap because they have Dino Mondo on field, therefore eating up the Low and Skull Guardian with a Lava Golem or the Skull Guardian with the Kaiju renders their board arguably useless. Ghost Bell on Dino Mondo is not a board breaker but a board preventer, so you don't even have to worry about breaking the board. Ghost Bell will just do work on their board. Evenly matched, if you can bait out the Skull Guardian effect to negate, evenly matched is just monumentally broken versus the voice of strategy. Super Poly, Dark Ruler No More, and even Harpy's Feather Duster can prove to assist you in taking out the game state. Each of these board breakers offers a different approach to dismantling the opponent's board and gaining control of the duel. While some are more specific to the voiceless voice strategies, others have broader applications in the meta. And finally, we have Floodgates, Summon Limit, Skill Drain, Deck Lockdown, Dimensional Fissure, and Macro Cosmos. Even Rivalry of the Warlords, but Rivalry of the Warlords is at 1. While effective can, you often really draw this Floodgate. I want to include it in here because I think it's a great tech. Light Imprisoning Mirror? I mean... That thing will literally just decimate any light deck. It's like a skill drain specifically for light decks. This is the counter guide against the Voices Voice deck. I hope that it was insightful and meaningful. Let me know how you feel about these options in the comments below and feel free to share your thoughts and any other available options that can counter the Voiceless Voice deck while simultaneously being able to be used against the meta. So we're looking for universal options. I'm Low Tier Hero, and until next time, my friends, don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, share, and hit that notification bell, and don't get caught lacking against Voiceless Voice. Take care.